Good evening and welcome back to my coffee bar in my home. This is Joseph Brewer and I'm going to talk about my uh, book again tonight on uh, a practical guide for church ushers and greeters. This will be part three in the series and let's get to it. So something I noticed um, when you're out front greeting uh, at your church, neighbors are going to walk by. I mean, it, it, it's, it should happen. Uh, that's a great opportunity for you to connect with your neighbors. Now, um, we always say hi to them. We wave to them. Um, and they they typically wave back, say hi, and they have a generally, uh, oh, good feeling about us, I guess. But one thing I noticed is a lot of them are out walking their dogs now. So, uh, one of the neighbors walking by had a Basenji and that I knew what a Basenji was. He, he, he got really excited and he stopped and talked to us for several minutes. And then, um, so now every time he walks by, he stops to talk to us for a few minutes. So it's an opportunity, just knowing what the dog was, uh, pointing out the dog, uh, it, it, it opened the conversation with the guy. And um, so maybe it's something that you can try, something you can employ that, you know, if they're um, just when they're walking by, if you can come up with something to uh, have a quick discussion with them. But the dog was worked out really well for me. So uh, anyway, I just thought I'd mention that that was a good one. Um, where we where our church is, there's we're we're right in the middle of a bunch of homes. So during our church services, people will be out mowing their lawns. They'll be out, um, you know, doing construction or working on their cars and things. And all those sounds echo through our auditorium. And uh, so anyway, um, what we do is we go over and we just ask them um, if they could hold off until the preaching is over. And... I've only had, I think, one person get mildly frustrated with me for asking, but all of them have complied, and and it's uh, it's not been a situation. Um, now, we uh, ended up having, you know, we have our church services um, on Halloween. We uh, celebrate Reformation Day, and so they're going to get a little loud on that night and so you have to use your judgment on that one if uh you want to let them get loud on that one night and you know potentially disturb what the things you have going on versus the rest of the year so um i i just recognize that it's one night that they're going to make noise and that they're going to be irritated if i go over and i ask them to quiet down uh many of them are likely drinking if they're having a party so i my personal opinion is it's just not worth that one night going and asking them to quiet down because the other, you know, 50 or 60 times a year that I would like them to be helpful um, in keeping the noise down, I think it's a great trade off. So um, that's the one time that I let it go and I, I don't ask. But otherwise, we'll just go over and ask them if they could wait and I just let them know when you start seeing people wandering around out front that the service is over and anyway they've been very compliant they've helped so just something to keep in mind um also where we're at uh we have limited parking so people have to park around the corners from our street and you know when when it gets dark I ask the women that end up showing up to church um, by themselves to park in front of our church. That way they are um, safe to walk to their cars. Now, the ones that end up parking around the corner because there's no parking in front or in the parking lot, it, it's, it's worrisome for me to watch a, a woman walking down the street by herself in the dark, and it concerns me. So, make yourself available to escort um, a woman or women who are walking down the street in the dark um, to their vehicle. Now, 
do be careful with that. Um, don't make it so that you make the woman uncomfortable and don't make it so that um, anybody can question anybody's testimony or anything like that. So use some wisdom, use some judgment on that. Um, protect your ladies that are at your church, watch out for them. And, um, but do use some um, judgment and wisdom there. So now one of the things that I found, um, which was one of the more difficult things that we've ended up having to deal with as ushers and greeters is dealing with funerals and memorial services. Um, it, it is kind of hard on the ushers and greeters because um, if it was a church member who passed away, uh, it's somebody who's been a part of our lives too. Um, it's somebody who we care deeply about and we would like to be inside sitting there um, participating in the service, but we're not really afforded that opportunity if we need to be out front. So it, it, it can be a little bit challenging. Um, and uh, where I really, where this really came into focus for me was uh, a gentleman in our church passed away and he really meant a lot to me. Uh, he he had a, a big impact on the way I conduct my Christian life. And I really wanted to be inside. Well, um, I ended up being out front by myself, um, handling everything. I was dealing with the florist. I was dealing with the funeral home. I was uh, showing people to the nursery, to the restroom. Uh, we had uh, the escort service there. And all of those people were getting antsy because they all have jobs to do. They're, they're all paid to be there, but they're on a schedule. They have someplace else they need to be. And so they were starting to get less, be less than cooperative at a certain point because the service was going a little bit long uh, for their taste. So um, that part was. Uh, it was a little tricky. I actually had to stand in front of the doors and block them to keep the florist from going in and collecting flowers and taking them out during the service. And I told him, I said, I suggest you don't do it because my pastor is likely to embarrass you if you walk up there and start grabbing flowers um, while he is uh, doing the eulogy. Um, so the guy thought better of it, but um they were sneaking in through side doors. They were looking around, trying to figure out uh, what they could do, how they could do it. Um, and so that was, that, was, that was a little challenging, but uh, everybody is, many people are grieving. Some are celebrating a home going if it's someone who was saved, but um it, it's tough, it, you know, when when it's somebody that you really care about and you're stuck outside and you don't get to be a part of it. it yeah, it's tough. So um, but we're called to serve. Um, that's our job as ushers, as greeters. Um, we're servants. We're, we're called to serve. We're there to help the folks that are there. And we have to remember it's not about us. It's about, um, again, um, representing our Lord, representing our church, and trying to be a blessing to as many people as we can. So something else that I've learned through, in particular through that, and then the next couple of uh, um, memorials that we had, is that everybody has different agendas. So the pastor has his ideas, his agenda, the things that he plans to do, wants to do, expects to do. And then you have the family. Well, on that day, the family feels a certain amount of liberty that they may not feel any other time because um, it's their loved one who passed away. And so uh, some of them can get very demanding of what's going on and, and they expect us to just comply with whatever they want. Well, um, we will be as helpful as we can, but, um, when it comes right down to it, um, 
we can't just comply with everything that they tell us to do. So my suggestion is, if possible, come up with a plan for funerals and memorial services with your pastor and um, get that all figured out long before they happen. And then um, whoever speaks with the family can uh, let the family know that these are the things that uh, we typically do. This is how things are typically run. And, you know, we can make certain accommodations for them, but um, uh, it's, we are going to let in church members that want to be there. Um, we're going to let in the people that um, we don't see as a security threat. And so uh, anyway, it, it, the whole thing can be quite challenging. So if you can come up with a game plan ahead of time, something that, um, you know, your pastor approves that uh, works for um, what he's planning, because he's going to want to, um, he's going to want to preach. He's going to want to introduce people to Christ who are there that are unsaved. He's going to want to celebrate the person's home going if they were saved. Um, and he's likely also grieving for losing a church member, um, losing a friend, losing a confidant, whatever the relationship was. So um, anyway, see if you can't work out something with your pastor that you can use to um, better facilitate things during those times. Now, where I made the mistake in that particular one is I didn't uh, tell my ushers and greeters that they would be on duty for um, the uh, for funerals and memorial services. So uh, my next ushers meeting is when I apologize to them, ask their forgiveness for um, not instructing them in that um, ahead of time. But I did let them know that when we have a funeral, when we have a memorial service, that we're on duty. Um, it's it's what we do. We're there to serve. We're there to help. And now. One of my ushers was asked to uh, uh, specifically ask to help the uh, family. Um, so he was there helping the family, sitting in the front row with them, tending to their needs. And of, and of course, you know, that's something that uh, we need to make sure happens. Um, we want to help the family and those people that are grieving um, as much as we can. So um yeah it anyway give that one some thought um and uh see what you can do to smooth those things out and make things a little easier for everybody now on uh occasionally we'll have somebody show up at our church moving on to another topic but protecting your pastor now all pastors are have their own personalities and the way they handle things, do things, what they want, what they don't want. So uh, find out what works for your pastor, what he would like. But when we have somebody just show up demanding to speak to our pastor, uh, I that's not going to happen. Um, I will let them know what the uh, uh, phone number is for the church and his availability during the week. Now, if it's um, somebody who's obviously grieving, somebody who's obviously in pain and, you know, suffering for some reason, what I'll do is I'll go find one of our deacons or a couple of our deacons, and I will have them uh, talk with the person and let them address things. But I don't want to um, let somebody catch my pastor um, off guard, unaware, and uh, so... I just tell them, no, uh, that's not going to happen right now. Uh, he's busy. He has plans because he does. He always has plans after every time he's through preaching and before he's preaching, he has plans on what he plans, you know, on what he's going to do. He plans to counsel people following the preaching. He plans on his discipleship ministry um, after other services and, and, and different things. So I'm not going to let somebody come in and disrupt that for him. Um, so something that you might want to discuss with your pastor, find out if uh, uh, that's a concern for him and how he would like you to address it. And it's just something that uh, um, I'm just not going to let somebody come in and do that to my pastor. 
Um, so we we protect him in that way. Now, um, <laughs> things have changed over the last, I don't know, few years, and now there are packages delivered on Sundays. So um, it may seem like a simple thing, but to somebody, you know, whether they're a mail carrier, Amazon, whoever, um, they're on the clock. They're just working. They're just delivering packages and they're going to be looking for where they can drop the package off. And we had a delivery person that was trying to open one of our side doors to get into the church before we caught him. So uh, that's something we're, we pay attention to now. We watch for uh, as soon as a delivery truck pulls up anywhere near our church, we start looking for the delivery person so that we can assist them. So we, we take the package, sign for it, whatever needs to be done, but we don't let them um, interrupt the service by walking in and going, hey, I got a package for you. Who wants this? You know, or calling out somebody's name. So uh, just... You know, it's something we didn't have to deal with five years ago or 10 years ago, but now we do. It, it Packages are being delivered on Sunday mornings. Um, something else for you to do is to familiarize yourself with the other ministries going on at your church. So um, when you have a guest show up, and it, it may just be one of the neighbors walking by who uh, you've piqued their curiosity over time, and they want to know about the other ministries going on at your church. You should have that information. You should have a rough idea as to the other ministries that are going on so that you can promote those other ministries and help them to grow as well. You know, there's you need to know the times, the locations, and who's in charge of it so that um, they know who to contact um, if it's not going on right at the moment. Now, if it's something that's going on at the moment, if some children show up that need to go to the nursery, um, take them to the nursery, you know, um, walk them on over there, get to know them on the way over and drop them off at the nursery. Sunday school kids, take them over to the Sunday school, drop them off. Um, but know where those things are so that you can help people. And that doesn't include just first time visitors, because you'll have people who've been frequent attenders, but they just come in the front door, go out the front door, and they haven't been around the property, so they don't really know where everything's at. And so things that you, you need to know is if your church has a school, you, you should know a little bit about that. You should know um, what grades and who they should speak to and have a phone number that they can contact the uh, principal or whoever so that they can make arrangements to uh, for their kids where they can learn more about your school. Then if you have youth programs, what youth programs do you have? Um, how can they get involved in that? How can they bring their children to that? Um, know your parking situation, your nursery situation. What age is your Sunday school for? Um, you know, where the water fountains are, where the restrooms are, all those little things that um, will help a guest um, to have a better experience at your church. So those are all things that uh, um, you should familiarize yourself with and be ready to provide an answer and um and you know if you and take them and um you know take them over to those ministries introduce them to those people now this next one is a little touchy and it's uh it took me a very long time to come up with a solution because it typically just made uh people angry and we don't allow infants in the auditorium of our church. Um, the preaching is too important to be interrupted um, really by anybody um, at all. And we love babies. I, 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 it just, we love babies. And I had been struggling with it for a long time when I would just tell people we don't allow um infants in the auditorium and if they're a new family um they don't know us they don't trust us and so now you're telling me that you're not going to let my child in there well um i was sitting in church one evening and there was a baby across the aisle from me and every time it would coo 
I would look over because I wanted to see if it was smiling and what it was doing because I like babies, I like kids. I mean, you know, I've got my three kids and looking forward to being a grandpa someday. But um, I realized in that moment that it's because of our love for babies, our love, well, our love for people, but our love for babies and that um, it's because they're so cute that we pay attention to them. So I began using that as my, um, what I tell new parents is your baby's too cute to come in the auditorium because everybody's going to want to look at your baby. They're going to want to see if it smiles and, you know, him or her preferably, um, you know, if you can tell if it's a boy or a girl, you know, he's so cute that everybody's going to be um, wanting to look at him and, and they're waiting to hear that coo and looking for a little smile. And it's going to be a distraction for everybody for 10 feet around. And so we don't allow babies in the nursery. That is much more palatable for those new parents, uh, those that have just, it's one of their first services there. Uh, to accept. And then we take them over to the nursery. On the way to the nursery, I explain to them or whoever's taking them over there that we do background checks on all of our nursery workers. And we only have women in there. We don't allow men in uh, the nursery. So we give them some assurances of the security. Um, and um, I, we do have a security person posted at the nursery. Um, so it, it gives them a sense of security for their child and they need that. I mean, every parent needs to know that their, uh, um, their child is going to be safe. So, uh, but something along those lines of we don't allow children in the auditorium because honestly, your baby is just so cute that's all anybody's going to pay attention to, you know, figure out what works for you, use the words that work for you, but find something along those lines if you do not want infants in your auditorium. Um, but the preaching is just too important to, for distractions and interruptions. And, um, and then that's what the parents are there for. They're there for the preaching. They're, they're not there actually to babysit their babies. So, try and help them um, in the best way that you can. So uh, it's been a challenge, but that has been effective in parents being cooperative because it's not that we don't like their baby. It's not that we don't like them. So um, anyway, just, uh, you know, like I said, come up with your own words and uh, figure out what works for you and uh, give it a shot. If you don't want those distractions, um, in the auditorium and uh yeah see how that works now the other thing when you do have a guest that shows up it's a great opportunity for you as an usher or greeter um to make an impression on them and to connect with them so walk them to wherever they're going um if if they're a guest and you know, you can um, take them in the auditorium, you can um, introduce them to people along the way, you can ask questions about them, tell them about yourself a little bit, and begin to build a relationship with them. It's a great opportunity um, by taking guests where they need to go on your property uh, when they arrive. So um, introduce them to everybody you can as your um taking them to where they need to go and maybe they'll make a connection with somebody and uh, um, when you seat them seat them if they if somebody invited them find that out and then take them to that person find that person and make sure they connect uh, if they just you know found you online or something like that try and seat them with somebody um, who is approximately their age and sex and um, and hopefully they'll make a connection, introduce them. If there's somebody that you know that's particularly good at um, connecting with people and they're on the other side of the auditorium or doing something else, after you've seated them and introduced them to whoever's there, 
go find that person, bring them over, tell them, you know, hey, we got a guest here. Uh, can you go over and say hello? Can you go meet them? And, you know, I, I haven't had anybody ever uh, refuse to do that because um, we want our guests to be comfortable. We want them to make connections and, and to come back. We want to see them saved. Um, so anyway, um, it, it's an opportunity when you have guests there to take them to where they need to go and to introduce them to, to, to people as you go. So um, with that, uh, we'll end this session for tonight. Uh, thanks for stopping by. And uh, if you have any questions, um, if there's something you'd like for me to address that uh, or further expand on, uh, you can reach me through my website, aka joebrewer.com. Uh, and uh, I figure that's the easiest way for you to get to me. And uh, other than that, let's uh, pray and we'll be, uh, we'll call this done for tonight. Father, thank you for uh, the opportunity tonight. Pray that you would bless our ministries, use us in the lives of all the folks that we come in contact with, um, that we'd be a blessing and uh, not a liability to our churches. Pray that you would uh, just Bless our pastors and the preaching of your word, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night.